and to all the dignitaries who are present here today. It is a pleasure to be speaking at the 5G and 6G Congress 2024. Uh, my session today will be focused on the innovation aspects and the technology development uh, domain which have enabled uh, Geo to deploy and scale one of the largest 5G standalone networks anywhere in the world. And because it is based on standalone technology, uh, we call it GeoTrue 5G. And 5G is not just the end, 5G is only the beginning. And as we move forward uh, from 5G to 5G advanced and 6G, that is where the true potential of consumers and enterprise value gets unlocked. So we don't need much of an introduction. Everybody in India knows who Geo is and what we do. But it is important to note that the technology that has been commercialized in the Geo network has been indigenously built. And every customer who enjoys the Geo 2 5G service today is being served by indigenous technology made wholly and solely by Indian engineers and Indian talent. And this also underlines the fact that not only it is about developing technology, but it is also about scaling technology. And some of these numbers show that how indigenously developed 5G technology can scale uh, even in the Indian context where we have the highest teledensity anywhere globally. And this also is a testament to the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Naren Modi, that Make in India actually works, it scales, and it also delivers the right quality to the consumers. And speaking of quality, uh, it is no secret that Geo has also won uh, the recently concluded UCLA Awards, the speed test company, in all the nine categories that were there up for grabs. So as we move from 5G to 5G advanced and then furthermore to 6G, there are many technology enablers and aspects which are very critical for the success of this technology evolution. And today I will be covering some of those aspects. First, a note on the standardization progress, because as we know that 3GPP, the third generation partnership project is the standardization body, not just for 5G, but also its predecessors, 4G, 3G, and 2G. So from a standardization perspective, the most critical um, release, as we call it in 3GPP parlance, is release 17 and release 18. And the success of release 17 and 18 implementations will pave the way for uh, 6G and also for 5G advanced to become a reality. And there are many technology enablers which will unlock new use cases for the industry uh, which are getting standardized as we speak in release 17 and 18. And then furthermore, if we look at release 19, uh, that is going to further build upon these technology advancements. Now, if we look at the technology enablers in 5G advanced and uh, towards 6G, they fall in three buckets. Technology advancements which are solely attributable to the 5G new radio, as we call it, 5G NR. Technology features and advancements which are driven jointly by the 5G standalone core and the 5G radio in coordination with it. And those technology advancements which are solely attributable to the 5G standalone core. And that is why 5G SA is so important. Because without 5G SA, none of these features uh, can be provided. And the benefits of this new technology cannot be passed on to customers. So these are just some of the services and some of the advancements which are under works from a technology perspective, whether it is in the IoT domain, whether it is in the full duplex technology communication with integrated backhaul, whether it is an extended reality, uh, which will become a mass a scalable service uh, with the advancement of 5G, and also for the inclusion of AI and ML, both in the 5G radio layer and also for network automation. So these are some of the features, and it's kind of a ballpark view of where technology is headed in the next two, three to five years. And if we look at some of the specific features which are going to unlock new services, especially for extending the reach of 5G, both indoors and outdoors. We did speak about it, the previous speakers did speak about it. So some of these features are enhancements to enhanced mobile broadband services. 
for example, coherent joint transmissions between the devices and the genome beads because the device ecosystem is equally important for the success and proliferation of 5G. And these features, they finally deliver uh, 5G services like massive machine type communication, which is called massive IoT, and massive IoT with a note on low power consumption because in order for IoT to become a mass service, uh, the power consumption semantics of devices and sensors have to be in place. It also helps in the furthering of private 5G and enterprise 5G, which is also possible only in 5G standalone technology and 5G wide area networks. And as far as Geo is concerned and as far as Geo platforms is concerned, we are working very actively in all these uh, areas. Then the focus is on improving the 5G experience uh, because as uh, consumers adopt 5G, as industries adopt 5G, we need to keep on working on improving the quality of service. So there are certain enhancements both in the 5G radio layer and also in the 5G core which enable a better customer experience. So even though one of the pillars of 5G is ultra low latency, but there are still enhancements to make it even uh, lesser in, in the, and more consistent. So latency, while it has reduced in 5G, there is still some more room to go, and that is being incorporated in the technology as we, ad as we advance further. And, and these features, they will enable uh, mass deployment of XR or extended reality services for enterprises and also for entertainment use cases. So cloud gaming is another area, uh, which is a sister concern for AR and VR, because uh, VR gaming is also becoming a new technology trend. And these features of improving the 5G experience will contribute to the mass adoption of these services. Then we come to industry 4.0. Private and enterprise 5G are taking their baby steps in terms of adoption and in terms of use cases. But the standards have taken cognizance of the fact that much more needs to be done to make it a mainstream offering for enterprises. And this is very important if the Indian industrial houses and Indian industries in manufacturing and agriculture for that matter have to adopt 5G at a very large scale because geo is all about scale. So we adopt the latest standardization direction so that the scale can be achieved at the you know, best possible quality. And these industry 4.0 use cases also contribute to V2X services, public safety, industrial IoT of course comes into the mix and industrial automation. And some of these areas are key focus areas for our research and development activities. Then we go beyond traditional communication. Uh, we ingrain AI and ML as an ingredient in the network and how AI and ML can deliver uh, efficiencies both in operational efficiencies and also in enabling new services. And AI and ML is not just a concept which is um, isolated in the cloud, but how do we bring machine learning at the edge? Because mobile edge computing as a concept uh, is central to the success of 5G services. And Geo perhaps uh, is the only network to have a very large deployment of mobile edge computing centers, which are serving more than 100 million 5G customers today. So edge compute and machine learning, those features, they go beyond traditional communication and they enable new services. That is the key message from this chart. Then we talk about many other things, uh, both in terms of street furniture, which is heterogeneous networks, which was spoken about, and how street furniture or small cells, both indoor and outdoor, will further, further help in creating smart cities like the one which is given here, and how AI and ML on the edge, along with HetNet deployments, will come together to enable some of these use cases. Then we come to 6G. Now, 6G's vision, as outlined by IMT 2030, uh, is quite inspiring. But we believe that 6G brings together three major axes, the human world, the physical world, and the digital world. So from connected devices to connected industries, and also with the advent of internet of bio nano things, which would have miniaturized chips for you know, enhanced healthcare in people. So I think 6G will bridge the gap between these three axes and these three worlds. That is our technology vision for 6G. And of course, we are working very proactively for accelerating 6G research, both in terms of a pre-standard 6G core, just like we delivered on a 5G SA core, 
uh, 6G radios, that is, of course, another area of development and research, especially the waveforms are being discussed today as we speak, and working on key technology enablers of 6G, because 6G is not something which is isolated. It is a natural corollary and evolution to 5G advanced. So we are contributing actively in the standards. We are creating a 6G core as we speak. And some of the key technology enablers for 6G, uh, full duplex communication, uh, intelligent reflective services, joint communication and sensing, quantum encryption, these are all sister technologies that come together uh, to enable 6G as a technology for consumers and enterprises. And of course, the use cases are endless. Um, you can, uh, you are only limited by your imagination when it comes to use cases. Uh, it is not that, that 6G will do something special for consumers, but it will actually help in proliferating 5G advance and spreading it far and wide. So with this, I thank you all for patiently listening to my session. And, I, and we come to the end of this presentation. Thank you.